Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of, let's see, looks like the new Miguel album, Wild Heart. Miguel, West Coast R&B singer, songwriter, who caught a bit of praise a couple of years ago with his breakout album, Kaleidoscope Dreams. And Miguel was kind of angled by PR as well as the music press as this R&B artist who not only had pop and chart appeal, but simultaneously, somebody who had an artistic flair that garnered just a load of very positive reviews. But personally, I just kind of found his stuff a little middle of the road. It wasn't quite left field and alternative and I guess sort of trailblazing in the way that I might see FKA Twigs LP1. <laughs> Such a good record. But on the flip side, I didn't really find his stuff all that catchy or poppy either. I mean, it was certainly pleasant to listen to, but nothing so bold and earworm-like that I would catch myself singing it or even remember it. And I think part of what kept this album from really being tangible and catchy is that I thought that Miguel often was kind of swallowed, his vocals anyway, in the very ethereal production on this thing. So remembering that, I was looking forward to this new LP, hoping Miguel would go into something just bigger, bolder, just, just something I could really grab on this new project. But then, uh, look at the cover. <laughs> the album art on this thing should tell you that Miguel isn't really all that interested in doing a, a down-to-earth project here. I mean, he looks like a, a naked yoga instructor in the middle of some kind of nocturnal blue, red, pink cloud dreamland. But there are some spots on this new project where Miguel really comes through with some very upfront, frank song topics with vocals that don't feel at all a wash in reverb. Take the song What's Normal Anyway, for example. This track has a kind of a plain instrumental behind it, but the message of the song is, is really endearing. Miguel is an artist and I guess somebody who sees the world in a different way as well as a man of color, sort of having a hard time finding a group or a clique or I guess sort of a culture to really totally feel in touch with and feel accepted by. It's a cute song. And we have the song The Valley as well, which is maybe the most upfront track on the entire LP in terms of its message and Miguel's voice. The track has this in-your-face sexuality going on in the lyrics, which is <laughs> totally fine. Love a dirty record. But there's nothing really all that sexy to me about this song. Nothing sexy about it. It's just really synthetic, redundant instrumental that loses its flavor after a few bars, and nothing sexy about its lyrics either. I mean, just the blatant mention of fucking isn't really all that titillating or interesting to me, nor is it all that interesting to sort of say, hey, let's fuck like we're filming in the valley, uh, you know, sort of saying, let's have sex like we're on a porno set, which, eh, I don't know. I mean, I don't really see the poetry in that, or the beauty in that, or even really, I guess, the, uh, the temptation of that. I mean, you want to have sex like it's your job in front of a bunch of, like, maybe sweaty dudes with cameras and lights. <laughs> Ooh, hot, sexy. And then we have the song NWA, which is a freaky little number on this LP where we get a lot of falsetto vocals from Miguel and he essentially channels his, his inner prince. So while I do appreciate that Miguel is a little more upfront on some of these tracks, many of the other songs here are mired in the same veil of sonic muddiness with a lot of low, 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 just quietly mixed vocals. Miguel just seems obscured once again. But this time he is set against some toothless instrumentals, some of which are kind of, I don't know, messy. I wouldn't say lo-fi. They don't seem like distorted or anything like that, but the production doesn't really seem that great. Take, for example, the song Deal. The first time I heard this track, my reaction was, uh, whoa, hey, I, I, I didn't know we were getting Toro y Moi demos on, on this album. Sweet. And those whoa, whoa, whoa vocals floating in the background, th th those do not at all sound like a chore to sing. At least not a, a, as much a chore as they are to listen to. Hearing Miguel pump out these incredibly mediocre, bad vocals is perplexing because there are other tracks on here where he sings very well. Like at the very end of Coffee, it's moments like this where Miguel is really just pushing out the energy, pushing out the passion, reaching into his upper range. That makes me feel like I'm, I'm listening to two different vocalists on this LP. And sometimes on this LP, even when Miguel is being charismatic, 
he is set against a kind of lo-fi and muddy instrumental, like on the song Waves, which definitely is one of the funkier tracks in the track listing here, but this sound, this instrumental sound is so bland. It's a little demo-ish, and the song Hollywood Dreams has a kind of diamond-in-the-rough quality to it, too. And I'm not against lo-fi music, but Miguel and Fisticuffs on this track, they don't really do anything interesting with this aesthetic. It just kind of feels like, again, a, a bit of an in-the-rough song. And the instrumentals on this LP are not just weak sometimes in sound, but in the way they're put together musically as well, like the really boring three-note guitar line and sub-bass hits and drums and vocals on the song Going to Hell, which don't really sync up together that well sometimes. And then there's the song Flesh, which thinks it's way more sensual than it actually is. I mean, just because your song is ethereal does not necessarily make it, you know, an emotional, dramatic, sensual experience. I actually found this track to be kind of chilly. Less like a warm, fleshy, sweaty, smooth embrace, and more like a plunge into the Arctic waters. Again, I think Miguel comes through with a pretty atmosphere with his producers on this record, but musically it's so hollow and just doesn't really leave me with much to munch on. Again, I hate to bring it up, uh, but the FKA Twigs record I think is a fantastic example of an alternative R&B album that, while subtle and while quiet and while just very toned down, has a lot going on compositionally, and you've really got to dive into it and listen closely to here and just eat up all those minor, very pretty, very beautiful details. Whereas here, we're getting a lot of atmosphere, we're getting a lot of just ethereal waves, just cavernous reverbs, but all of this space is mostly left empty. It's very hollow. For me, overall, this LP was a very weak follow-up for Miguel. Didn't like it, did not like it, didn't even think it was decent in the way his last album was. And uh, though I do give him some semblance of, of kudos because I think he took some stylistic risks on this LP, like on the song Leaves, where we're essentially getting a rock song in a sense with some driving drums and a lone guitar being strummed. But here, again, I kind of feel like we're not really getting a whole complete fantastic song. It's just sort of Miguel riffing vocally off the top of his head and delivering some kind of redundant lyrics over just a very light, hollow rock instrumental. There's just nothing about this LP that's all that consistent. Some of the instrumentals are really clear and sound fantastic. A lot of them don't. Some of the vocals are upfront, they're well performed, the lyrics aren't too bad either, but that's not the case for most of the LP. Miguel sounds fine approaching some genres, he sounds weaker on others. Uh, just not really that excited with this LP, honestly. Uh, I, I'm finding this even less memorable than the last project, and uh, I, I can't say, with, with this album, just having heard this album, I'm that excited to, to hear what Miguel is going to be doing next. Uh, in a way, it's it's pleasant. It certainly can, can play in the background, but as far as like foreground listening, there's really not much interesting going on. I mean, and, and I don't even really find this record to be as sexy as some people are charging it to be. I mean, I wouldn't even think of this as being a, a, a soundtrack for, for that. I mean, I'm getting, uh, you know, chills and just uh, stuttering thinking about that, just being filled with fear, filled with fear, uh, feeling a light to decent five on this thing. Tran? Zishin, have you given this record a listen? If you have, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Miguel, forever.